Welcome to the Average Joe Finances Podcast. Are you trying to get out of debt, invest, or just not sure where to start? Then this is the place for you. We discuss different ways to get out of the rat race and build your wealth. Join us on this wild ride to financial freedom. All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Mike Cab with Average Joe Finances uh, coming at you with uh, podcast number two. And in this podcast, I want to talk about our seven steps to financial freedom. All right. So this presentation, uh, and for those of you that are watching the video, you get to see the presentation. Awesome. Uh, for those of you listening, I'm going to go ahead and try to read over all the slides and make sure I get all that information out to you. All right, so this presentation is meant to help you jumpstart in the right direction towards your financial independence. Okay, we've researched some of the most successful financial gurus and on how they've you know, reached their goals and, and what it is that they um, have used to be successful. I think you can kind of say that this is a mixture of Dave Ramsey and Robert Kiyosaki all put together. Most of them follow something very similar to this, but we, we do things a little bit differently. I have on here that, you know, we follow these steps ourselves and we're on track to retire before 50. However, I am on track to retire in four years when I retire from the Navy. And if I wanted to retire full time, I could. I've just really taken on a passion for what I'm doing here with this blog, this podcast, the, the Facebook group and also real estate. Um, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing with this. I think I just want to keep it going. So retiring at 40 is awesome, but I think, uh, I think I want to keep this going a bit. So part of this introduction, I'm, I'm putting myself on here. I'm Mike and I'm your ordinary average Joe. All right. I know it's, it's a little cheesy, but don't mind me. Okay. All right. Step one. Now the very first thing you want to do as you're Building your plan to financial success is to identify all of your income sources and add them up. Okay, it's important to know what this number is. All right, you want to take that income and you want to split it based on how often you're paid, whether it's monthly, bi monthly, weekly, or bi weekly. Okay, step two you want to identify all of your bills and when they're due. Okay, now you want to prioritize all your bills and your expenses. Okay, so whether it's your rent or your mortgage and car payments, that's going to be the first thing you want to prioritize, okay? The second thing is going to be your utilities, uh, such as electricity, water, sewage, etc. The third is groceries. Uh, we all need to eat. That needs to be up there on your priority list, right? You don't want to go hungry. People do silly things when, when they're hungry. I know for me, I get hangry, right? Uh, the fourth thing is going to be uh, your, your debt, right? So your credit cards and your loans. The fifth priority is going to be your, your nice-to-haves, right? So um, that's going to be your cable, cell phone. These are things that you don't necessarily need to have, but they're just a nice-to-have, right? Okay. And then the final expense that you're going to put away is your fun money, okay? So I personally feel, okay, if you're not disciplined, you gotta put something away or you're gonna cheat, okay? You're gonna wind up pulling, uh, you know, not paying a bill that you meant to pay um, because you weren't paying attention and, you, and you, you spent your money without really thinking it through, okay? So if you budget yourself some fun money, it can make a world of a difference. It worked for me. I'm, and if it works for me, I'm very undisciplined when it comes to this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm working on getting myself better. Uh, it could definitely work for you. Okay. All right. We're moving on here to step three. And now here at step three, uh, this is where you take all of that income and your expenses, you put it together. And what, this is when we start building our budget. This is when you're going to formulate it. Okay. Um, this budget can focus on many different things, such as ridding yourself of debt or saving for a new car. So in this particular step, you need to identify what your budget priorities are going to be. All right. Okay. So for an example, uh, the priority for this budget that we're talking about here is to get out of debt and start saving. We'll talk a little bit about investing too, 
uh, but we won't, we won't get too heavy into it, right? Because right now the focus is making sure you get yourself out of debt. Okay, moving on to step four. Uh, this is an important one. It's pay your bills, okay? So listen, now that you've identified what bills you need to pay, it's time to prioritize all of them and make it happen, okay? Let's get out of debt. So to start, you need to save at least one mortgage or rent payment in your savings account for an emergency. Once all of your bills are paid, it's time to start snowballing all of your debt. So to snowball, uh, the one thing you want to do is you want to pay all the minimum payments on your credit cards, okay? Um, and your loans. Now, this is not including your mortgages uh, and car loans, okay? Because um, those are expense priority number one, right? You need a place to live. So you want to take the credit card or the loan with the highest interest rate and take everything that's left over from each paycheck and dump it into that particular debt, okay? If you have credit cards with low balances, you can pay them off first for small victories. A lot of times people celebrate that small win, okay? Um, and, and it helps motivate you to keep going and, and keep pushing forward. Okay, so once, that's, uh, once those are paid down, you wanna do the same thing for the next highest interest rate. Um, and as DJ Khaled would say, another one, another one. You just wanna keep going till that snowball, snowball just formulates into a giant avalanche, right? All right, rinse and repeat until your debt is paid off. I promise you that if you follow this step correctly, and you, you start paying off all your higher interest rate debts first, okay? And you just keep snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. You will pay your debt down so much faster, okay? Um, I explained in my introductory uh, podcast episode, episode number one, where I talked about I had $27,000 of credit card debt. I managed to pay that off in two years. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that um, I had budgeted myself that fund money. I had snowballed all of the debt, paying off those higher interest loans first. It really, really makes a difference. And I'm telling you, each time you pay off one of those debts, I mean, that's the time you take some of your fund money, you take your significant other, you go out to dinner and you celebrate that win. And I'm telling you, it motivates you to keep going. Okay, we're moving along to step number five. Here we are, we're debt free, this is awesome. Now it's time to start saving up your money, okay? Now you wanna start treating your savings as a bill. And you wanna pay that bill first, you wanna pay yourself first. This is kinda of where like the Robert Kiyosaki method comes in, so if you haven't read Rich Dad Poor Dad, it's, I'm gonna give it a shameless plug here, go read that book, it's a great foundation to get started. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to take, uh, take a look at all of your expenses and multiply them by three. So for those of you in, in certain job fields where job security is not 100%, see, uh, you know, for me being in the military, um, this really is a step that I can kind of finagle a little bit. So I don't really have to worry about losing my job unless I do something stupid and get in trouble and get kicked out, which I don't plan on doing. Okay, so, but, um, even, even then, it's still important. I still have emergency funds, okay? Um, so you want to look at your expenses, multiply them by three, maybe even six. Some people even have up to a year's worth of their expenses in an emergency account, okay? So this money that you save will go into your emergency fund. All right, so this fund, as I said, will be three months worth of your expenses, uh, and this is in case of any issues with your income in the future. Okay, this fund will also be used in case of any unexpected expenses. So if you have car problems, you know, I actually have a separate account for just my vehicles uh, for uh, any maintenance done on them or anything like that. And that's something that we'll get into another time. Uh, I do something called sinking funds and we can, we can talk about that a little bit, maybe at the end of this, okay? So if you use any of this money from your emergency fund account, you need to treat it like a loan and you need to pay it back right away. So you're going to kind of go back to step three and you're going to snowball. Well, you don't really need to snowball, right? Because you're already out of debt. This is the only thing you're paying back. You're going to go aggressively and pay that thing back, okay? 
All right, I even circled that here on the presentation. Pay it back right away. Okay. Here we are, moving on to step six. Now that the emergency fund is created, it's time to start saving and investing. From this point forward, you're gonna start saving money for future things that you wanna purchase, okay? Uh, and this is so you're not using credit cards or taking out loans. This does not mean you cannot take out a car loan in the future, okay? Some car loans have APR rates so low uh, that you're better off investing that money and making a car payment. Because what you're paying over time, especially with these zero interest rate uh, car loans, it's, it's a free loan. Okay, your goal right here is to live off of 70% of your income. That's what you want to shoot for. We're talking about for your savings, you want to try to put at least 10 to 15% into savings. And now we're going to start talking investing because now you want to start saving 10 to 15% invested into a retirement account. And that could be a 401k, Roth IRA, or even in the stock market. You start, you know, if, if you go into like index funds and things like that. Okay. Another great investment option is real estate. And we'll have videos on that and, and podcasts on that in the future. Definitely looking forward to those because that is like my new passion. Okay. So I'm talking about 10 to 15% in the savings and 10 to 15% invested you can change that up a little bit. I think it's important to give back. Once you have yourself established, uh, I really like the 10-10-10 rule, 10% into savings, 10% into investing, and 10% you give back, whether that's uh, if you go to church and you want to tithe, that's tithing, or you're donating to charity. Um, when you get yourself to the point where you're financially secure, being able to give back, not only does that feel good, but you're helping other people, and I really think that's important. It, it, it helps you push yourself harder because you know that the more that you can do for others, that means you're doing well for yourself, okay? So um, we will talk about different things you can invest your money into in future videos and podcasts as well. Doesn't necessarily have to be a 401k or a Roth IRA, all right? So step seven, you're gonna rinse and repeat with your budget. Okay, once you get your savings account to a comfortable level, you can stop putting money in savings. And as we talked about before, invest more into your retirement accounts, stock market, or in real estate. Okay, so retirement investments. Just want to talk a little bit about some of these things you can invest into, okay? 401ks are good accounts to invest in uh, because most employees will match a percentage of your contributions. If you are investing in a 401k, you need to always invest what your employer will match at the very minimum because this is free money, okay? If your employer says, we'll match 5%, you know, up to 5% of your contribution, you better be investing 5% because that's free money on the table that you're leaving if you're not putting into that 401k. Very important. Make sure you really think about that when you make that decision. Another great way to invest towards your retirement are, are with IRAs, okay? They're, uh, they're pretty good accounts to control where your money is being invested. Uh, it's important to know the difference between a regular IRA and a Roth IRA. And I'm going to kind of just give a brief, just a little bit of information about that. Um, so to keep it simple, when you take your money out, when you retire and you're withdrawing from that IRA, if it's a regular IRA, you're going to have to pay taxes on that when you withdraw that money. It's going to be based off of your current tax bracket. So I want to stress the importance of this because when, when you're looking at your current tax bracket, when you're getting ready to retire, when you're getting ready to retire, you are at probably the highest paid you've been ever right? You're getting ready to finally punch out. That means you are in your highest tax bracket ever. If you are a W-2 employee, that the more money that you're making that you're getting paid, the more federal income taxes you have to pay. That puts you at that higher tax bracket. Being at that higher tax bracket when you withdraw that money is going to hurt because Uncle Sam will take their cut. 
Okay, and on the presentation here, I put depending on your tax bracket, you can lose a small fortune to Uncle Sam, and that is no lie. Okay, with the Roth IRA, as you're making your contributions, you're paying your taxes on it first, okay? So it's before that money hits your account, it's taxed. When you withdraw it, you will not be taxed. Uncle Sam does not get a cut of it because they already got their cut. Now, here you are at this higher tax bracket withdrawing this money for your retirement and not paying a cent back to Uncle Sam. Pretty good deal, right? I know. Okay. So, if you've made it this far and you can get through all seven of those steps, congratulations. You have set yourself up for financial independence. If you found this presentation to be useful, please like and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Give us a like and a review on uh, whatever uh, area you're listening to this on with your podcast, whether it's Spotify, uh, iTunes, uh, Google uh, Play, whatever, wherever you're listening to us, okay? We plan to upload good content on all different aspects of financial freedom, uh, from different ways to investing to good side hustles you can do to make a little more cash for investing and saving. So uh, I want to thank you all for listening to us. Definitely check us out on, at AverageJoeFinances.com, uh, Facebook.com uh, slash AverageJoeFinances. We also have a, a pretty awesome community uh, in our group. Check out our group page as well. So I believe it's Facebook.com slash groups slash AverageJoeFinances. You can uh, follow me on Twitter uh, at AVG. J O E underscore finances. Okay. And also on Pinterest, uh, just average Joe finances. Hey, thanks again, everybody for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this show and we're signing out. Thanks for listening to the average Joe finances podcast, your source for beating debt, saving money and investing. Learn more at average Joe 